Hi, I'm going to tell you a story um, about uh, the swim team. So when we were growing up, my family belonged to um, a swim team at the neighborhood swim pool. And this pool was where we spent most of every day, every summer of our childhoods. And um, all through the school year, people would look forward to the summers and we look forward to summers at the pool. And when I would describe a perfect day, the pool was always involved and it's in like many, many of my memories. So the swim team season lasted about eight weeks, a week or two practice, and then five weeks where there'd be two or three swim meets during the week. And then a final week of practice that ended in a big day long championship event. Champs, we called them. Champs was held either the last Saturday of July or the first Saturday of August, it kind of depended on how the calendar fell. And this was age group swimming. So <clears throat> in general, you swam with your age group. Um, you could swim up, swim with older kids, but that really rarely happened. So the age groups were eight and under, nine and 10, 11 and 12, 13 and 14, and 15 to 17. And, and each swim meet lasted like about an hour to an hour and a half. So there were not a lot of events. Oh, and there were male events and female events. Um, there was not any kind of um, co-ed kind of competition going on. And most of the events were relays. So it would be four people. So four spots made up a, a relay. And there was only one individual event for each age group. And um, it was a flat out freestyle sprint. So two individuals could participate in that. So two, two spots for that. So the team's coaches would submit the lineup before the meet, and that was one of the rules. And each swimmer could only take up two spots, but you always wanted to get two spots. So um, if you were on the younger, younger side of your age group, you were at the bottom of your age group. And if you were the older side, so like nine and 10, the nine year old would be bottom of the age group, the 10 year old would be at the top of the age group. So when you were at the top of the age group, you also sort of wanted to be your team's number one swimmer. Um, <clears throat> that way, for sure, you got the pick of the of the spots at, or the events in the meet. And plus, who, who doesn't like to be number one? A bunch of kids who are racing, they, they all want to be number one. So I have a sister who's just about a year older than me. And her, her name's ML, and she's pretty awesome. So every other year, I was with her in her age group. So when I was nine, she was 10. When I was 11, she was 12. And uh, that was pretty good, because then we could share being in these relays together. And it, it worked out pretty good. When um, <clears throat> ML was eight, so she was at the top of that first age group, she met a girl named Becky. And Becky was fast. Becky was the number one swimmer, but you know, ML was number two. So ML being just competitive enough, she wanted to be number one. So she worked really, really hard. Then the summer that ML and Becky were nine, they, they the 10 year olds were sort of in charge that summer and had all their glory and ML kept working really hard. And, and her and Becky, they were neck and neck and she wanted to get faster um, so that maybe she could be number one when she was 10 guess what? Becky's family moved. This was like a beautiful thing. The competition was out for number, the number one spot. They moved out of Pennsylvania to the state of uh, Connecticut and all spring looked really great. Looked like Emma was going to get to be the number one swimmer. But in June, of all things, Becky's family moves back. So <clears throat> here Emma was all prepped to be the number one banana in the nine and ten age group and this um, Becky moved back and um, Mary ML became the number two swimmer. So Becky's family never moved again, but for many summers, there was this competition between Becky and ML. You know, it's the kind of thing that you're glad that other person's on your team, but you just like to occasionally beat them. That one kid who's always just a little faster than you. You do your best time, and they do theirs as well. So they're always just outbusting you. So by the time we got to high school, when we started noticing a little bit more aware of um, different things, we started noticing 
some things about our friend Becky. So although she was a faster swimmer, there were so many things she wasn't really quite as good at. And like, she was a little bit socially awkward and had um, trouble making friends or, or fitting in with people. And Mel was always surrounded by a lot of friends. And Mel was a straight A student. She worked hard, but not that hard to get her A's. Becky had to work really, really hard at school to get good grades, but not even, not straight A's. And my sister could sing, she could play the guitar, she could play tennis, all these things. And, and Becky, she was a fast swimmer. So it seemed very obvious by that time we were a little bit older that the more Becky tried to be like my sister, the more she really wasn't like my sister. So once my sister realized how much Becky really liked her and really wanted to be like her, she, she became a lot more compassionate and the, the um, competition sort of fell to the wayside. Um, you know, Mary Lee just had so many other talents to enjoy. She still swam and she still worked really hard, but she kind of gave up the whole rivalry between her and Becky. And of course, Mary Lee and Becky be went on to become very good friends. And that's really one of the lessons that sports teaches us. That sometimes you're not really the best, but really most of us really aren't the best at what, what we love to do. Um, but we can be our best selves. We can try our hardest and we can make friends. So I have another sister just a little bit younger than me. And in this little swim league, there seemed to always be a, uh, a few summers where our favorite relay were the three sisters and Becky. So um, the lineups were always done by our last names. So we always call this Roderkiss, Roderkiss, Roderkiss Donaldson. So the four of us could swim together. And that's my story about our friend Becky. Started out a rival, ended up a friend.